realize that 87% of your show points derive from your model car's finish? Hi, my name is Don Yost, probably better known as the old man in the modeling cycle. What you're about to learn today is a step-by-step -step procedure that it took me 46 years to develop. It's easy to follow, and as long as you follow the steps, you're going to end up with shine on your paint just like this. open rafters in a paint room. If you look up here, you'll see dust and dirt gathered on the boards. Open rafters are not good. If your house is five years old, five minutes old, or 50 years old, you're still gonna have the same thing. People walking across the floorboards, running, stomping, kids chasing the pets, vice versa, that dirt is gonna rain down onto your paint job. My suggestion, go to a lumber yard, buy yourself a sheet of Marlite, put the Marlite up, or buy some Visqueen, staple it up. This way you trap the dirt up here, you don't have dirt raining down onto your paint job. Now, if you look up here in the right hand corner, you'll see an exhaust fan. Remove all the fumes out of the booth, clear sailing, don't have to worry about it. Airlines will be added, you've got Receptacles for new lighting. Lighting will have to be added. This fluorescent lighting, while adequate, is not as good as what it can and should be. You want to have a room where you've got lights the whole way around so you can see all sides of whatever you're painting. Not so much the 125th, but this leans more towards the RC end of the deal. Everything that you need to do a quality paint job is contained in this kit. Three heads, H1, H3, and H5. H1 for thin, H3 for medium, and H5 for wide angle shots and better coverage. I prefer the H5 to use as a head for the model cars. Obtain this through a hobby shop or you can go to an art supply store. They are available online. Relative cost anywhere between $55 to $70. This I would recommend for the car modeler. Military, I would suggest, along with model railroading, a dual action. You have much more control of this. This is a perfect airbrush for a starter for anybody. We have masking tape, garden variety. This is a must. It's got a million and one uses for your modeling in your shop. You can use it to tape off. You can use it as I have used it in the video, but you can't go wrong. It has to be right where you need it, right at your right hand. You're going to use this more than you would ever begin to believe. Local hardware store carries it all the time. Now, one thing about it, always work with a small piece inch by inch, three quarter by three quarter. Reason being, if you have a body that you're working on, you have a mold line here, if you're trying to use a whole piece, you're gonna end up sanding where you don't want to. And once again, we're going back to, you got sand lines, you don't know where they came from. So always work with a small piece of paper. You can fold it in half. Just make sure that it's just the right size for where you wanna work at. All right, paint jars in, little test fire, nice blow. Start lowest point, start to the left, move to the right. All it is is mist coats. Very, very light coats, barely covering. Eventually just let your color build up. Now to ensure that the hood or any other parts, separate parts, that have to be the body color are the same. Just lightly coat the body, put a base down on it so your color starts coming through. Set it off to the side, do the same for your hood. You have to constantly turn it. Now if you're painting something like a 1941 Willys or a 40 Ford, you've got recessed areas on those cars, you have to get the paint in there first, otherwise you're not going to have a consistent coat on the car. 
you have light spots, dark spots. Once again, start left, back and forth, left to right, nice even coats. One thing about pearls, it takes a little bit for it to build up to where it covers. Don't panic if you got some uneven spots, they'll eventually go away. The more coats you put on, the better off you are. Anybody that thinks putting two coats of paint on and two coats of clear is a fool. It doesn't work that way. Because if you go to polish the car, or say somewhere down the line, the car is inadvertently dropped, or something gets spilled on it, you're not going to have a base thick enough where you can return it and your paint job will be ruined on the car, it'll have to be repainted. Here we have the body that we already painted. It's already in clear. There was a little mark. Now listen, this body for the most part is flawless because I controlled the environment. You're not going to have to wet sand out all that often and if you do, it's usually something that's in the very top of the coat. Now we had a little mark on the top, give it a little 4,000 here, and it wasn't so much that there was a mark in the paint as there was something got dragged across the roof. Okay, we'll give it a little 6,000. This will take out that tiny little scratch. Give it a little 8,000, and we'll give it a little 12,000.